Hey guys, welcome to episode 16 of Unethical Podcast. You'll never know what you'll find. Our guest host for this episode is Lucas Hursty of Members of the Jury Podcast. And today we're going to be discussing Bountiful BC, Religious Colony or Straight Up Cult. Welcome to Unethical Podcast. When you think of Canada, uh, one of the things that you don't think about too much is polygamy, right? There, like, there's entire states across the border with the reputation of being religious cultists with like sister wives, but up here, it's definitely not something you see uh, and not really something you think about. But I've come to learn it exists here. In fact, nestled in the mountains of BC, there's a colony of Mormons with a very bad reputation oh mountain mormon mountain mormons exactly <laughs> <laughs> lucas shook his head on that he didn't like it as much i liked it mountain mormons <laughs> well it seems like it seems well no it, it seems like, like they, i think that's a more i don't know if that's a, mountains are a part of the mormon thing but it, I, I mean when you think of mormons you think of utah when you think of utah you think of mountains and i you know i just i don't know hey. <laughs> i like it <laughs> I, I didn't even think of that. So there you go. You're maybe they don't, they need mountains. Maybe Mormons need mountains. Maybe anything to stop people from running away. I think <laughs> hurtful terrain is helpful. <laughs> they find like the little bowls of the world where you know they can just nestle in as all mountains on all sides. So it's like ha. Either it's desert where you're gonna die from dehydration, or it's mountains. We might have just exposed every Mormon like community in the world that was unknown now and just go look into like a valley of mountains and you'll never know what you'll find. Like looking under a rock and finding centipedes. Uh, <laughs> just scatter. Uh, or just crawl back uh, into the ground. I just I'm just picturing at the top of Mount Everest a fucking Mormon guy handing out a leaflet. <laughs> You won't want to go back down. <laughs> hey, man, once you get to the top, going back down must seem like it's going to suck. I'd settle in with a Mormon colony to avoid it for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh. Okay, so the settlement was started when a member of the Church of Jesus Christ and the Latter-day Saints, or LDS for short, bought property near Lister, BC in 1946. Uh, the man's name was Harold Blackmore, and Harold was actually what's called a fundamentalist member of the LDS. Now, whatever you want to call it, the members who follow the teachings of LDS but refuse to abandon the practice of polygamy like the church did in 1904 transitioned into a new branch of Mormonism called the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ and the Latter-day Saints. So they are actually, as far as government radar, and a number of organizations, they are a cult. They are labeled a cult. So again, that's not something you think of really in Canada either. Cults, but we have a cult. Hey. And who says we have no culture? Oh, we have uh we have some crazy cults in Canada. Rosh, uh, whatever that guy's name is, the Anthill Gang. Look that up if you guys are ever into some Canadian cults. Oh my fucking terrifying. I don't want to get into it because you got this, but we have a crazy cult here, Ant Hill Gang. It's not, it's never heard of it. Maybe a future episode. We'll have a look. So, by the 1980s, many of the followers of LDS who transitioned into the FLDS followed Harold into BC, where Harold and his nephew Ray Blackmore had established the polygamist branch colony. And the name Bountiful was chosen in the 1980s when Ray's son, Winston Blackmore, became the bishop of the colony. And so the name Bountiful comes from the Book of Mormon. And it is believed that all of the residents of Bountiful are descendants of only six men. Is this why the polygamy thing is like 
looked down on because like five guys or six guys will take over a whole colony it's like i don't see the inherent bad thing of polygamy but i see the inherent bad of that jesus six yeah, guys ugh. I, I, don't, I don't like that yeah and then like down that. the line like what if you know what if one person decides to leave and then those people never know that they're brothers and sisters and then they end up hooking up like in college <laughs> <laughs> that's the fear of having five guys like right that's the uh, i i had a friend once that told me he went to the uh yukon and like he was working at a mining camp up there where they had like the uh indigenous people up there and they told the indigenous people since there was so few population up there they were asking him to like go make a baby with his daughter so they could have just more in their bloodline isn't that fucking weird like that's a mm -hmm. thing that happens in places he didn't do it but or at least he said he didn't do it but who the fuck knows <laughs> yeah. oh my god <laughs> uh he listens he listens to the show too he's he listens to the show he's definitely gonna be fucking... tell, tell the truth yeah tell the truth come on mm -hmm. we got we gotta know for science yeah exactly like let us know let me know and i'll i'll record it because he's not a techno person he just got into the podcast because of me but once i'll record he works with me i'll record his answer and we'll put it on the facebook page <laughs> all right <laughs> if he did it or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh so before i started looking into this case um i don't know about you guys but uh i'm a non-religious person and my religious knowledge is anecdotal at best so I had no grasp of Mormonism or the church whatsoever. Um, so here is from my research, the very, 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 very abridged version of the Book of Mormon. So in the Book of Mormon, a man named Leahy is warned by God in a dream that his city is going to be destroyed. And he takes his family across the sea to the Americas. So his eldest sons, Lamont and Lemuel, think that he is full of shit and probably just drunk again. But his youngest son, I think it's Nephi, um, he wants okay. to be just like dad when he grows up. And so God chooses Nephi to be his eyes, his ears, and his great big fucking mouth on the ground. So Nephi's older brothers get really put out by the younger brother, just acting like, you know, he's so much better than them and pissing his face all over their Wheaties <laughs> and they decide that they want to kill him so the non-believing brothers end up with all of their own followers of people who don't believe in shit and they're called the the um the Lamanites and then the young brother also has his followers which are called the Nephites so these groups are now at war and they fight all the time and the book is essentially about all the ways that they fight with each other and the spiritual lessons that they learn and all the ways that God is just awesome for letting it happen. But uh, when Jesus is resurrected, he shows up and he teaches the non-believers to have faith. And then everything is all better and there is peace for hundreds of years. But eventually the Nephites lose their faith because Jesus has been gone a while. You need, you need a refresher Jesus. You need a booster Jesus, if you will. Hey, man. <laughs> Don't we all need a little injection of Jesus into our lives to keep little us little vitamin J. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. <laughs> LSD. Yeah, what a, what I, a uh, way to name a cult. I mean, LDS. <laughs> LDS. <laughs> LDS. <laughs> See, when I heard it, I thought LDSK, longest serial killer. That was funny. Uh, I was like, acid. LSD is a different <laughs> religion, like, my friend. It's like, what do you think they're doing over there? <laughs> Holy smokers. Don't the Mormons do peyote in the desert? I thought that was something. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think that's, that's anybody who finds peyote in the yep. desert. That's, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that's how that goes. You're hilarious, Tally. In, in my head the whole time. Oh, LSD, like... that's a different religion, my girl. In my head, I was like, huh, wow. 
Like that's enticing that's the, to me. That's yeah, the right. CIA yeah. Creating. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not sounding so bad. That's what she's thinking. Like, okay, go go on. I'm liking I'm liking the start of this. Okay. Drugs, war. Se- okay, yeah. tell me more. Well, they're all fucked up on the religion. Maybe that's why they're polygamous. They don't even yeah. know what's going on. They're all like, oh. Ooh, something shiny. <laughs> you look like my other wife who was a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> the walls are melting. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, no, I was thinking to myself, I was like, and I here I thought I never would join a cult, but oh <laughs> I could scary. see me starting a cult. <laughs> me too with LSD. Yeah. As long as that's involved somewhere. <laughs> not everyone's gotta do it though. I'm not about peer pressure. You wouldn't run like a Jim Jones type of uh, cult. Like, you know, not everyone has to drink the Kool-Aid at your cult. <laughs> More like a like more like the Rosh niches. Everyone just love each other. <laughs> don't, don't put them in the don't don't, don't put to them kill in the same program. Homeless people because they didn't help us or whatever the hell they did. That's an excellent <laughs> scripture. Yeah. I'm in that cult. <laughs> put them in I'm sim- doing these things anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm in your cult. I, yeah. I, I, I do that. I already do that. Okay, but do you have like a process of forgiveness? Because I may or may not have already killed like one, maybe two homeless people. Oh yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Just come as you are. Come we'll uh, we'll dip you we'll dip you in some start cherry now. jello and th- dump some feathers on you and send you on your merry way and call it christening. Well, I'm gonna have to think of a different outfit because that's what I was gonna show up in. Oh shit. Okay, yeah. So without their their vitamin J booster shot, they lose their faith and there are even more wars. And then eventually all the Nephites end up being completely obliterated. So the Lamanites or the non-believers are the ancestors of the American Indian, which seems kind of racist. But hey. Yeah. So the Book of Mormon was discovered by Joseph Smith, and he formed the Church of Jesus Christ and the Latter-day Saints in 1830. So Joseph's deal was when he was 14, he was praying in the woods, and then both God and Jesus showed up to chat. And then when he was 17, an angel led him to a hill where he was told to dig, and he found a book of gold plates upon which were written the Book of Mormon. And he then translated them and distributed them to the people who, of course, were already very much hurting for religion. There was just not a whole lot of religion in 1830. (laughs) Hearing the book was found by the hill makes the the whole mountain conversation make more sense now. Like maybe maybe it is like... like religious man's not wrong yeah. inclines yeah. man yes. inclines what, what was the god and jesus even saying to john smith yo there's gonna be an angel hey what's up john you got your daily monthly injection of vitamin j i'm gonna give you some vitamin g with the god here too uh in a couple of years an angel will come and talk to you what's up like, yeah basically more or less <laughs> <laughs> that's good I, I love religious like uh when when like god comes down and speaks to the humans there was it's something so, else like... about like him losing the plates and then he had to like read them to his wife out of a hat like looking staring into a hat so that his wife could write whatever he whatever he wanted yeah. that i heard her right i mean the whole thing was on the <laughs> there was definitely oh, okay. lsd involved interesting He's just looking into a hat yes. and seeing words. <laughs> yeah, probably. I don't think Tally had it wrong. I think John Smith had it wrong when he called it Latter Day Saints. He was probably Latter Saints Day LSD. <laughs> what are we thinking about? CIA's involved. <laughs> this is deep state shit right now. I'm in with Tally now. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. It's all secret code. We really got to stop blowing the lid off of all these things. Yeah. I mean, we solved John Bonet. We're just. <laughs> <laughs> we did so well hey man we're doing our civic duty we are we're doing our civic duty you know good law abiding nobody citizens. asked us to do it we're just <laughs> doing it <laughs> you're welcome yeah. <laughs> happy to be here um okay so um uh, joseph smith died as a martyr in 1844 but so here's the thing his original book of mormon actually condemned polygamy um because 
the prophets within the book had many wives, but they were commanded to by God. And so anyone who took many wives without being commanded by God, they were, it was considered exploitation. But in one of the revisions from the hat, Joseph claimed that straight from God, polygamy was now preached as God ordained. And so Joseph took a whole bunch of wives, which really pissed his wife off, by the way. So the theory behind the whole polygamy thing is that in order for a man to be accepted into heaven, he must build his own kingdom or a large family with many wives and many children of which he is king. And then if he takes enough wives and has enough children, he himself can become a god once he reaches heaven. So this whole thing is probably just going to oh. piss off some Mormons. So any Mormons out there, if you want to get on the phone with me and explain Mormonism to me properly, just hit me up on Facebook. I'll give you a chance to talk about it. But this is what we're going with. This is the unethical education on Mormonism. Class dismissed. Yeah, and I, f I feel like uh, for a, a three or five minute uh, spiel, that's probably the best you're going to get. I'm sorry. This could probably go into a theological discussion for six hours if we really wanted to get into it. But like, come on, don't give Celeste a hard time. Don't give me a hard time. Don't give us a hard time. You can, but I mean, you've got to understand we're trying to bridge this for a story. There's a method yeah. to our madness and it's coming up. Exactly. Okay, so here we go. Winston, the bishop, of bountiful bc he was excommunicated from the flds in 2002 and so he created the church of jesus christ original doctrine so followers of his church believed him to be their prophet there are currently about a thousand residents in bountiful bc roughly half of those residents are followers of winston's church um so that's original flavor and then the remaining half, they call Warrenites. And oh, Warren then Jets. those residents strictly adhere to their prophet, Warren Jets. Is there no, is there no like non-secular people that live there? It's just legit half and half like that. That's a little bit, that's kind of crazy. Do they get along? <laughs> no. So this is part of what makes Bountiful interesting. <laughs> so polygamy in and of itself is like a whole step backwards historically. But... The women who are part of war, uh, not Warren, of Winston's church, they're actually granted a great deal of independence and freedom. In fact, two of Blackmore's wives don't even live in the colony. They're still married and spiritually committed, but they live across the border somewhere in the States, a little more urban. And one of his wives was allowed to get a full post-secondary education to become a teacher and not even a teacher in the colony, literally just wherever she wanted to be a teacher. And he allows his daughters to wear makeup and have body piercings. And um, now uh, they are actually allowed to date other teenage boys from the colony. And so that's very different from the Warrenites because they are married off when the prophet decides it's time for them to be married as a reward to one of his, one of the people that has good favor with him, one of the men that has good favor. So, but yeah, they're allowed to date the Winston's followers, which is interesting. And if they plan not to practice polygamy as adults, Winston's like, that's okay. Yeah. So, okay. So the followers of Warren Jeffs of the original FLDS, they're under the leadership of Bishop James Oler, and they have a much more strict religious lifestyle. So boys within the colony, because let's think about the math of this for a second. All of the men take multiple wives, but statistically, the children are going to be probably about even. So there's not enough women for all these men. So the boys spend pretty much their entire childhoods learning how to work. And their form of income there is a mill. They process lumber. And they essentially learn how to work. And then once they come of age, they're just sent away from the colony to go and fend for themselves in the outside world while all the girls stay unless they have been granted favor with the prophet in which case they are brought into like the inner circle and given a bunch of wives so yeah boys really get the short end of the mm. stick there well that's not even true 
in my opinion, the guys are getting the better and they get to get away from like the insanity and they don't get sent to like three guys like Jerry's, like your dad's friend, Jerry, to be his husband for the next like uh, rest of the life. Yeah, so. you're right. You're right. I'm wrong. Yeah. They're just like, <laughs> it's a religion to entrap women. That's oh, crazy. Yeah. It's very misogynistic. Oh, yeah and gross oh, it's super sexist is bad because <laughs> yeah like god only likes the yeah. men to be gods at the end of it. like there's no women out there getting to be the polygamist and you know what maybe they should have a uh if they're gonna do it one way maybe all the leftover guys they could just go with like ethel you know auntie ethel uh she's the the god woman one see the weird thing is that in some of the interviews with the women <laughs> they said that you can go to heaven and become a god or goddess and so the women apparently can become gods in heaven, but I don't know how, because the only way for a woman to get into heaven is for a man to invite her in, her husband to invite her in. So I don't understand how that works, but they, I guess, are told that they also have a way. I wonder if it's if they have to bear, a, like they have to have a lot of children, you know, almost like a hands made tale. You know what I mean? Like if, yeah. you, if you're able to... Uh, if you're a wife that's able to bear children, like that's kind of your role. And then like, if you can't, like they make some other kind of use out of you, unfortunately. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Well, and abide your husband too. That's the other thing. The better servant you are to your husband, the more likely your husband's going to let you in. So you have to be really nice and have a kid. Me, I'm going straight to hell. The more <laughs> kids, the, the better the odds. <laughs> Morning. Love you all. Morning, morning. Morning. We're talking about Mormons. Does Australia have Mormons? Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. We have. Is there a mountain? Oh, okay. Are they? Do they live near the mountains in Australia? <laughs> uh, the hills. <laughs> well, in Perth, we only have hills. So, okay. actually, the one, the one LDS church I have seen is actually in the hills. So. No shit. Yeah, no Lucas, shit. you were fucking right. There we go. You were fucking. Oh Jesus, man, Lucas. Kill it. There you go. They live in the mountains, and the book was found in a rock. I don't know if, if my name is in the last page of those books or so. <laughs> or I don't know. I felt a connection he knows there. What's up. Oh my gosh. So yeah. Um. Yes, there is Mormons here. Um. I'm not sure about over east, but um. I, I mean, I don't know if they live in the mountains in the east, but <laughs> um. But yeah, all I know is elders. La, uh, latter-day saints is that right lds and lsd, <laughs> LSD if you're in yeah. my head <laughs> i should have known that already uh, that you would have said that my love <laughs> i did yeah. i did it was stupid imagine their um what is it called when you drink the wine and eat communion. the oh, yeah the communion. communion imagine their communion man uh, everyone just starts doing yeah. cartwheels <laughs> on the way out like all right well you guys you guys keep going okay so Knowing what we know about how women get into heaven and how men get into heaven, I think this paints a particularly nasty picture of Winston and prophets, I think, in general, because they genuinely believe that the only way to get into heaven is to be part of one of these kingdoms, but they send their sons away to not have their own kingdoms. And Winston's letting his daughter, daughters choose not to be polygamous, uh, polygamists and, and uh, like have boyfriends and shit. So I think this kind of paints him as like a father that just does not give a fuck if his kids get into heaven. Yeah. But he has a lot of kids to be fair. I think it would be hard to give a fuck about that many. <laughs> After three, I'm done. I don't give a fuck. How many kids do you think he has? I'm going to go with probably like knowing LDS shit, probably like 20. Okay. Tally, what do you think? nine lucas i was 20 is a good guess i would say i'll go for a shock value i'll, I'll say 35 he doesn't even have he has more wives than that okay. winston has 150 children okay wow <laughs> he has he has i believe 30 wow. 30 wives and 150 children is that uh in american or in canadian that's Canadian. So with exchange rates, there's no way they're all getting know. into heaven. No way. <laughs> Stubborn dickheads. Well, and then like the more kids you have, the like higher chances of like diseases and, you know, like spina bifida and things like that come about. So that's like, mm -hmm. I don't know if mm -hmm. it's about one woman bearing that many children, but I would assume 
that it's all you know that it's all the same genetic trailing so it's like I don't know I don't know if that would be the same but like you know people around here that have like 10 kids at least one of them is you know like has down syndrome or something I think that contributes to like a long childbearing period with one partner whereas his wives have like one very busy childbearing period but then they stop having kids when like things get iffy kind of thing okay because he's got new wives to pay attention to right I don't think he wants to fuck Mm -hmm. the old ones right and they just keep coming oh man (laughs) how many wives did you say how many wives he had you said 150 kids how many wives no let me let me check it's around 30 hang on I have it written down here he (sighs) has oh 26 26 wives and 150 (laughs) children that's like I can hardly handle one uh... wife mate (laughs) And do you know age ranges? Just out of curiosity. Is this a... I was wondering that too. Um, okay. His first wife, I believe he married her in the 90s and she was 15 at the time. Oh, oh, so man. his oldest wife would be, I guess, what would that be? In her 40s now? 50s? Yeah, 40s, 50s. I'm not, I don't math. Depends when. <laughs> Depends when in the 90s, but yeah, 40, 50. Yeah. Uh, he actually would have had more wives, but he's divorced from one of them or like whatever. She fled. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Just one. I'm so surprised. The rest were beheaded. Yeah, they don't do that, I guess. They just sort of let them go, but they're not prepared for the outside world because they were all fucking, they all fucking grew up there too. Mm. Yuck. Anyway. So we've sort of gotten into it already, but we're going to get into the problem with polygamous Mormon sex, in particular with Bountiful. So in 2002, Rulon Jeffs, he was the prophet of the FLDS since 1986, um, he, he fell ill and he was replaced in practice by his son, Warren Jeffs. And so abuse charges are rampant throughout the Mormon community because of their beliefs about taking child brides. So the main reason that Bountiful came under fire was because Warren Jeffs frequently visited them throughout 2005. So he was very well known to authorities by this time. In fact, he was placed on the FBI's top 10 most wanted list in 2006 because he arranged forced marriages between adult male followers and underage girls. And he was officially arrested as an accomplice to rape for forcing a 12-year-old girl to marry her 19-year-old cousin, first <sighs> cousin. Yuck. And what remember, half, half of the members follow him of Bountiful. Ugh. So nasty. Not only was he um, a matchmaker, he was also <laughs> a great big nasty pervert <laughs> dumb fuck himself. Yeah. Mm. yeah yeah don't these sorry keep going i was just like didn't they did he like don't they like walk anyways i i don't know enough i shouldn't ask questions that have nothing to do with <laughs> i know where you're going and like they like watch them crash in the marriage or even him himself like sleeps with the wife first before he allows like anyone else in the community to even like oh my god they just got married he he sleeps with them first and then the husband basically yeah that's your that was uh that that was david Uh, koresh right that's what he did yeah i think it was david koresh yeah uh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. i uh, i'm just like a 12 year old and a 19 year old (laughs) and then you're there in the corner like let me observe like oh god <laughs> it's so fucking gross it's so gross when you like think about what's actually happening it's nasty just to say it okay whatever but once you like there's a room and they have their own clothes and shit like their own oh god oh god i'm grossed out i gross myself speaking out. of gross when he was arrested the first time he was arrested because there was an undercover person in there doing video record um audio recordings of the interactions going on and they managed to record him in a room with nothing but teenage girls explaining them how to explaining to them how to sexually excite their husbands and these girls were like 12 to 17 and explaining to them how to sexually excite him too and so there might be something to what lucas was saying about he may also have sex with them i don't know because apparently women are so dumb that they they won't instinctually figure it the fuck out. Well, I think there's no <laughs> way that their bodies are going to like voluntarily sexually respond to these men because they're fucking gross. Well, I mean, right. But, I mean, you know, it's like once they mature, they're going to 
figure it out because how did we all uh, the rest of us figure it out you know what i mean like, i didn't have no preacher telling me how to do it yeah. that's for like the normal people though they figured out like these guys are probably like to pleasure your husband you must eat a piece of this drywall or something fucking weird like that they would have never guessed because that's what kind of weird ass shit they're into it's just yeah, insulting. It's gross. It, for sure like <laughs> In this, uh, the Mormonism, from what I've heard so far, uh, sounds very uh, patriarchal. Is that the word? Uh, and it's not mm-hmm. uh, like, yeah. fuck that, man. Women are way, like, come on. It's the 2021. Like, women are participating in everything. What are you doing? What are you doing? Of course, people are going to start noticing that you're doing shit like this. Of course, people are going to start cracking down. Like, you guys are fucked. Progress with the times, or you're going to get, like, this shit's going to happen, right? Like, yeah, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> so, um, so back on Jeff's here. So when he was arrested, that was in 2012. He was also arrested for child sexual assault because he had three underage brides. Two of them were 12 and one of them was 13. Oh um, my God. Uh... And at that time, two members of Bountiful, were also arrested and charged for bringing said underage brides from Canada into the United States to marry him. And so now not only do we have gross statutory rape, we also have child fucking trafficking going on with these cults. And do they like, sorry, do they defend this stuff? Like it's my religious freedom to do this. Like, is this what they think they can say? And everyone's going to be like, oh, you know what? Give her like, Oh my God. Oh, yeah. fucking Winston. And one of the interviews, he was like, it's the ultimate religious persecution that one of your cops will come in and arrest me when he he's seeing multiple women at the same time. And he was talking <sighs> about how non-religious men are like filthy because they'll see multiple women, but not marry them. And so Mormons are better because they marry them. Oh, uh, yeah. They just openly do it, <laughs> <laughs> which makes it better. I, I mean, so th- the interesting, I always think the thing that th- that to me, though, is that like it is there is some truth to that. You know what I mean? Like, especially in the States, you know, uh, divorce rates are upwards of like 50 percent now. And like that was something that like, you know, uh, who was it? Will, Will, Will Smith's daughter Willow was just talking to on like national TV about how she's choosing as a as a young adult to be polygamous because she thinks that like that the the force this of uh, monogamy is what ultimately leads uh, to high divorce rates because adultery and people are being unfaithful and it's like is something uh, you know people engage in that act and don't get caught like are they as criminals as just as much of a criminal as the ones who engage in the activity and do get caught you know that's always to me a really interesting conversation well there is a legal difference right there's a legal difference between marrying multiple partners or polygamy or bigamy and having multiple partners mm-hmm. which is polyamory and there's nothing illegal about mm-hmm. that yep. so as long as you sure. don't marry more than one you're like do whatever Especially you want and it's all consenting yeah that's what i was gonna say they're 12 yeah. they can't consent to nothing so what are you doing you're making them you're putting them their whole life they, this is what they see as normal so like you're starting them yeah. at like a baby yeah. to learn like I can't wait to get my husband along with my cards or whatever like game I'm gonna play my doll like it's fucking mm-hmm. weird it's yeah uh, it's yeah too much. a large string of grooming yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. it's too yeah. much polyamory yeah exactly like polyamory. Richard said <laughs> as a consenting adult for sure yep yeah. yep same why not yeah go for it man. I don't know if I could ever do it, but I mean, I totally see the benefits of it. As someone who likes to be left alone, that's like a huge plus for me. Yeah. Is they have someone else, if they want attention, they can go fuck off and see their other girlfriend. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, anyway, Warren Jeffs is currently serving a life sentence for his behavior, but the kidnappers and child traffickers only received 12 months in prison. And I think. That is probably because they are Canadian. I think that as actually me and Lucas were discussing on members of the jury, there's a lot of differences between how Canada and the U.S. um, function in their justice system. And I think that if they had also been American, they would probably be in prison for life as well. Mm -hmm. So despite intense investigation between 2005 and 2007, there was never enough evidence to lay charges against any other members of Bountiful or either of the prophets because there was a lack of victims willing to testify 
and the complications surrounding religious freedoms, because unfortunately that's one of the rights that we give people is to practice your religion without persecution. So those who did speak out uh, claimed that they would be raped constantly. Their husbands and the prophet would threaten to keep their children from them as a means to keep them compliant. And that the girls who didn't agree to be married were threatened with exile, despite having no skills to cope outside the colony. Um, and as Tally mentioned, there were rampant accusations of incest. Ugh. Ick. Yep. I mean, how can how could there not be when, you know, like, it's just one I feel like community constantly fucking one community you know like it doesn't work that way that is not how evolution works no No. but i feel like this is why they're traveling back and forth (laughs) they're trying to like mix it up from the communities right like that would be my only guess as to why that was even happening but i don't know but oh yeah you're absolutely right do not like i do not like that they call it bountiful Uh that's just disgusting Uh the extra wives were brought over from a settlement in colorado that is how they kept the numbers up Oh my God. So more trafficking. Cute. So um, I listened to a really interesting interview with Winston's first wife. She was the one who fled. Her name was Jane. And she fled because she wanted to take her youngest daughter before she could be married off before she was 18. That is what happened with their, with her, their first two daughters. So she would go on to be the only person to testify against Winston in court including any of his daughters. In fact, one of those two daughters has since abandoned the church, but she wrote a book on her experience. And one such story in that book was, it involved her asking Winston if she could marry the boy that she loved. And Winston was like, nah. And he made her marry instead a friend of his from America. Oh my God. But what, like, in complete op- like opposite of what you'd be expecting right now, that act- entire book actually was a defense for her father. She defended him through the whole book. That even that wasn't even like her bitching about him. Wow. What the fuck? That sounds like a slap in the face. You know, it did not do well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it flopped. It just <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> when they start you off so young like that like you don't know different you you gotta like it's hard for you to even comprehend what real life is like or i shouldn't say real life or a life out of the commune is like and you think that's so normal that you would defend them because like they're not doing anything wrong it's it's so sad it's so sad just goes to show the absolute level of um manipulation and grooming that has been done to her to for her to be able to write a book and feel like she's actually telling the truth about her dad while he is just an absolute psychopath but like he probably he probably yeah. doesn't know any better either you know like yes yeah. sure no but like not really because it's part of the religion and my religion is the thing and we all need to follow that so i maybe laws of man don't apply to me because i'm gonna be a god soon like Winston is very intelligent and I don't believe that he believes in any of this. I think that he just likes being the prophet. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of interviews with him and in those interviews, while he does discuss his faith and things like that, when he's, when he's blatantly asked a question about, for example, how many wives he has, he will immediately give the interviewer the runaround where he won't answer the question. Instead, he'll accuse the interviewer of being forward with the information between the interviewer and their spouse and talk about how like it makes them you know how he's better because he doesn't talk about his private life and they openly talk about the fact that they're married and it makes them bad people and i think he's very smart yeah it's just a form of manipulation yeah Yeah, absolutely cameras well i mean if you look at any of the cult leaders unfortunately they all had like a certain level of like genius and most of the time it is like a like a genius level of the ability to manipulate because you know they're getting tens of hundreds of people to do the most outrageous and yeah. outlandish things imaginable like selling off your 12 year old daughter i think i have i mean i was never in a cult but <laughs> a lot of people would a lot of people would would call <laughs> The Pentecostal church occult because they're a religion but 
the intense when uh, the intense sense of belonging that people want they just they are so they want so hard to belong to something and be a part of something and have that connection with other people that I think that's how these cults work and how they grow they just they grab hold of people that are so they so intensely want people to love them and to be a part of something that when they get so deep into it they they a part of them knows that it's wrong but they can't break away from it or or let go of it because of that intense sense of belonging and they become connected to the people around them and that's I I can understand that because I did the same thing like I being a part of the Pentecostal church I it wasn't for me it wasn't about the actual religion of it it was about the belonging to a group of people that were like-minded and the comfort of the answers that it brings you absolutely yeah absolutely and I So it's a double-edged sword in that sense because they're so desperate to be a part of something, but then on the other other side, they're like, I know this is wrong. Like I know the way we're being treated is wrong, but I can't, how am I supposed to get out of that? Because I'm going to lose everyone I love. Absolutely. And threatening them with exile is incredibly effective. It's so, it's, it's literally, it's like threatening them with like prison. It's, Mm -hmm. it's losing all of your liberty while being granted your liberty it's something you can't experience in any other context it's bizarre Mm -hmm. yeah and so so despite the problems that they were having with pressing charges and things because of the lack of of willing witnesses as a compromise the investigating prosecutor decided to take it to the supreme court of british columbia to review the laws regarding polygamy And he hoped that a review would give them firmer ground to stand on uh, because it hadn't been reviewed in a long time. You know, there's so many laws that are so old that even though it's still illegal, they're not upheld, you know. And so in 2011, after a review, the Supreme Court upheld the laws regarding polygamy in Canada under Section 230 or pardon me, under Section 293 of the Criminal Code all forms of polygamy and bigamy are illegal and can be punished with up to five years in prison. And that's separate from any child trafficking or rape laws, right? This is just straight up having more than one wife. Can I, uh, can I ask a quick question? I know what polygamy is. What is bigamy? Two, only two. Oh, okay. So it's just polygamy light. Yes. Diet polygamy, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> Diet polygamy. <laughs> <laughs> so the members okay. of Bountiful were served with warning and they were made aware that they must end the practice of polygamy immediately or face legal action. But of course, Bountiful did not stop. And the court system decided in 2017 that they were going to make examples of two prominent men within the community for committing polygamy. And those two men were Winston Blackmore and James Oler. Both were children of founding members of Bountiful from 1947, and they led the rival churches. So they went straight to the head of the snake for this. And this sounds good, right? This sounds awesome. They were both convicted. Sounds phenomenal. They were convicted. It made them the third and the fourth people in Canada ever to be convicted of polygamy. But. But. (laughs) The (laughs) sentence for their crimes were three months for Oler. And six months for Winston of house arrest. Oh my God. So you don't even get to go to jail and become somebody else's Mm. God future. No. And yeah, as I mentioned, this is for polygamy. That's all they're being charged with. Blackmore had 26 wives, 150 children. Two of his wives were actually siblings. And as I mentioned, Winston had actually married three 15 year old girls himself. That's nasty. No charges of did they? So when they send them back home, do they go like, okay, now you're all divorced or whatever, so you can't live here? Like, did they at least even make sure the wives weren't there? Because like their house is where the fuck wives would be, right? No, no, nothing like that. And the the marriages oh. weren't legal; they were spiritual. Yeah, but for all intents and purposes, within their community, mm. it is a legal marriage. So, um, James okay. Oler, by the way, was also charged in 2019. Uh, unrelated to polygamy he was related he was charged with child trafficking 
he brought a 15 year old Canadian girl into the United States to be married to a follower in another colony. And he was sentenced to one year. What was the charge? Uh, child trafficking. Oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> that's terrible. Yes. Yes, it is. But they kept going. They also took action against another Blackmore descendant that same year. Brandon James Blackmore and his wife, Emily Ruth Gale Blackmore, were charged for, again, trafficking, taking an underage girl out of Canada and into the U.S. This girl was 13. Okay. And they received seven months for Emily and 12 months for Brandon in jail. And these are all girls from other communities of Mormons? Or are they just like people like how they're taking they finding these from, girls? Yeah, they're all taken out of Bountiful and into other colonies. Oy. Yeah. So okay. despite allegations of rape, statutory rape, incest abuse, and child trafficking, Bountiful BC continues to exist as a polygamous colony. No efforts beyond giving some of the leaders a slap on the wrist has been taken to protect the residents. And the so-called prophet of half of them served no jail time for his part in it all. And in November of 2020, the investigation into Bountiful was officially closed. They aren't even watching them anymore. And so let's <sighs> talk about it. Is religion enough? Is, can they stand on their religious grounds for what they're doing? No. No. I, no. It gets complicated. It gets complicated because, right. okay, it's the child molesting. Sure. Get, like, let's not do that. That's like the kids get that out of the, the, the picture. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I don't see if they're 19 or 20 or whatever the age is, 21, let's just say to be equal around, and they want to be a part of a polygamous cult. I don't see why you can't. Uh, right. It's the kid part that bugs me. Uh, but the implication is that they're given a choice and that they could possibly give consent. But they were raised in it and they were never but, given any other option as being presented to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you don't know any, if you don't know any different, then why would you choose something outside of the what you know? Like it would be terrifying for a for a 12, 13 year old to be like, well, you can either marry 57 year old Uncle Bob or you can go away you can go and live on the street you can like so you know you're gonna choose the lesser of two evils so to speak you know like that would be terrifying as 12 year old yeah it'd be terrifying as a 12 year old to be i sorry they have to make it above board if they're gonna like if you want to get married you have to go to a courthouse or get it uh and then you have to prove that they're 19 or whatatever for me to be okay with it other than that uh, if, yep. the, if a guy 55 year olds walk around with a 12 year old holding their hand at the hardware store or something there should be some fun but i guess it's the whole town is like that so like yeah 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 i think cults like severely abuse the maslow's hierarchy of needs of people which is mm-hmm. you know your basic Absolutely. needs food like water safety needs which yep. is security and safety which is the community mm-hmm. Next up is the belongingness and love needs, which is your relationship and friends, which they are providing for you. I mean, it's right there on the table, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then the esteem needs, which is, you know, preaching to the ch- girls and telling them like how to be this perfect specimen or whatever. And then the last mm-hmm. one is self-actualization and that's, you know, reaching your full potential, which apparently is being someone's wife and having children. Like, I think we were finding out that that's not what life's all about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So would we say we're all in agreement here that this, in this particular case, no, your religion gives you no right to do these things? I think so. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Okay. Yeah, to anybody, yeah. to anybody. I had a feeling we'd get here. So I have another question for you. What about, what if we just legalized polygamy and as a result, we're granted the ability to monitor and regulate it? I have no problem with that if the people that are being involved in the polygamous relationships are of age and can give proper consent. 100%. You want to marry fucking 14 people, whatever, as long as they're all above above age and they they are all consenting adults to it go for it and it can't just be guidelines like it has to be 
the way it is you know like Mm -hmm. no exceptions yeah yeah maybe they need like a year in a non-polygamous place so you understand that exists as well uh you have to go off to to somewhere that's not if you live in bountiful you can't just live there your whole life it's it's off the table you know uh but that seems like like it's a lot of weight it's a lot of uh trying to figure out rules so this works right i think that's probably why they blanket say no to it because it's so complicated two people a relationship yeah. with two people is very complicated uh where mm-hmm. it's equal and, and everyone's working together towards a common goal and doing imagine having like 15 people where you have to like take into account all <sighs> of their needs and wants so hard. jesus so hard. <laughs> i wouldn't want to yeah. do it i wouldn't want to no. at all <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why you would choose to actually put yourself in that situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that's yeah, the exactly. problem, right? If they knew that there was another choice, I mean, who would do this? Who would volunteer to be servant yeah. and slave to this husband that has a wife for every day of the fucking month, pump out literally all the babies yeah. you physically can for them? Who would choose this? And you know what? I'm sure there are people who would choose it. So why no. not let those people choose it? Mm. i'm i'm in i'm in it just to ask be like tally said there has to be so many strict guidelines to the whole thing for it to be able to be viable because like just the the, the potential for child abuse is so high the potential for brainwashing like regular focus so high the potential to like there's so much bad potential for what so you can have uh two girls stroking you at night like i don't get it it's not worth it it's not worth the uh, <laughs> like no. no, and that's that's another thing too. Brainwashing, like I, to me, that is fundamentally like th- cutting your rights. Like, nope, you don't have any autonomy. Yeah. You can't think for yourself. We are one unit. We all think the same. Like, no, I've never been that way. Like, I did grow up in a church, you know, because my mom was like, "You have to go do this because all your friends are doing it." And I'm like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> like, I've already said this a million times. <laughs> And like, you know, I didn't conform. I don't go to church anymore. As soon as they said, or what it, what the hell is it called when you got to dress in white and get a little pin on and do the thing? Confirm, confirmation. There you go. <laughs> That's been confirmed. It's confirmation. <laughs> oh, I hated doing that. Like conforming to me. I was like, you're literally telling me like it's confirmation. I'm not conforming to shit. I don't want to. I don't like this. I want to choose isn't, for myself. Sorry, I again, I'm non-religious. Isn't confirmation a symbolic wedding? Aren't you getting married to yes. God? Isn't that why you wear white? Gross. Yeah. 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 So child brides are not new in religion. Yeah. And I grew up in the Lutheran faith. Yeah. It's being married to the church. Yeah. No, I I got divorced immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Annulled. annulled did you write a pre marriage annulled, annulled. <laughs> <laughs> annulled. yeah it wasn't even there she was the one who spoke now or forever he'll be like, no 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 like i'm i'm actually objecting uh, to no, this mm-mm. Nope. yeah <laughs> nope. i'm actually like, uh I'm, I'm i'm committed to uh to steve from blues clues oh. actually there you uh, go. <laughs> that lsd right is that the lsd yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. I know what he's got in his pocket. <laughs> I uh, and you know what? <clears throat> I know part of our fundamental rights as granted by the government is our right to religious freedom. And as a non-religious person, obviously I can take or leave it. I don't give a fuck, right? Doesn't change my life any, you know, skin off my nads. But the right to religious freedom has opened all these doors for the fact that a religious commune can exist at all to me because it's it's outside the law it's above Mm. the law how how can this happen nobody can monitor them all they can say is i'm just practicing my religion the way that i'm supposed to be practicing it and i can quote some obscure scripture that can tell you among like any other applicable thing that can tell you why it's okay that I'm doing what mm-hmm. I'm doing. But I think uh, maybe Lucas, yeah, for sure. And maybe Lucas can correct me on this when I say this, because you, you're a lawyer, right? Lucas, is that what yeah. you do? Like yeah. you work in the, yeah. So I think that probably more than uh, 90% of people that use religious freedom to do something outside of the lines are doing it 
in a nice gestury way. Like they're not doing anything to pull one over. It's just, they legitimately believe that. Right. Like, uh, so I don't think it's, I don't know, the whole religion thing's complicated for me too, because I, I don't necessarily believe in anything, but I can't say that it doesn't exist because I don't believe in anything. Why can I believe in my thing? You know, I don't believe in nothing. I believe in nothing. I don't know yeah. what I believe in nothing. Stupid. All of it, right? Believing in nothing is still believing in something. Anyways, uh, so it's, uh, I can't take it away from them because they're brought up that way and stuff like that. Religious freedom is all fine and good, but I mean, when it comes to like, there should be some basic rules, like you can't hurt children. You can't hurt other people. You can't stomp on anybody else's freedoms. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, because you want to be freedom religious, you can't like uh, uh, propagandize your shit to make other people believe that because they should yeah. have their own way to think it, you know? But I don't really, it's really complicated because religion is so hard to people's hearts, yes. close to people's hearts, right? I think the intention behind religion needs to change. Uh, like, I think the opposite of you, Richard, I think people are in it for the power and control and the money. I don't think they're in it to cushion people's lives. Obviously, why would, you know, why would you entrap women like that? If that's what you're all about. So I'm not talking about, Mormon. <laughs> yeah. I'm not talking so, about LSD. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was specifically, but yeah, um, yeah. yeah I, I get it. But like a lot of religion is like that. <laughs> Catholicism, you know, they're exposed fully and people aren't doing shit about it. So it's bullshit. So the intentions behind religion need to change. They need to go from not wanting power and control to actually wanting compassion for others. If they were about looking after people, the Vatican wouldn't exist. The Vatican, yep. yeah. I've been there twice and literally that place is a shrine to money and power and manipulation. And if that entire place was knocked down and sold off, the money that they would get from there would feed the world forever. Like it is absolutely disgusting. People go there and they're like, oh, this is so wonderful. It's so awe-inspiring, but it's not. It's not. It's just a massive shrine to all these people that just get uh, get away with all this disgusting manipulation and like I hate it like I hated going there I hated mm -hmm. it something Richard brought up made me think that your right to freedom of speech is only applicable so long as you don't infringe upon the rights of others but clearly in this case religion infringes upon the rights of women and so as such shouldn't this be illegal straight up man when so it that stuff gets really like complicated and like interconnected and, and you know that's what i was richard made a really good point you know like it, i think if they rely solely on like the religious component right that allows for multiple wives we all kind of had the same consensus that if it's of all consenting adults then like that's fine and so if they're saying that like that's the con aspect of the religion that they're um, using as a basis for like the multiple wives, then like, of course, that makes sense. They should be allowed to have that kind of religious freedom. It's then the abuse of the religious kind of protection that they'll, you know, use to go into everything that we've talked about here, the grooming of the kids, the the manipulating of only the women can stay and us shipping out of the men like there's no way i mean i'm not familiar with like the mormon religion and again i'm not that a religious of a person either but like i'm pretty sure like one of the basic fundamentals of all religion is like the sanctity of like human life mm -hmm. and so if you're going against that you're obviously going against the principle of your religion mm -hmm. and so then to try to use your religion as a basis to do those things yes like that would not allow to me the protection of a religious freedom even though like i do think that like you know there should be allowed uh, communities that if they want to in them within themselves do things that are maybe outside the norms of society, but accustomed to that religion within the bounds of both laws created by their religion, but as well as the man-made laws mm -hmm. that they're living in. Like you, you can't, you can't not just say like, I'm only going to live my life by one because in, in the world we live in today, that's not both. You have to have uh, a, an area for both. So that's what I would say when it comes to the kind of connection between religion and law. But uh, yeah, those who like 
use the face of religion to commit these heinous crimes are, are just depic- despicable. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a really, I, I wish we would tax the churches. Oh, my God, yes. Um, Same. You know, because, yeah, you know, when we talked about corruption and things like that, um, you know, how many mega churches there are in the United States that could, you know, essentially house the entirety of mm-hmm. the homeless population yep. or the number of million multi-millionaire pastors who could uh, make communities of poverty no longer mm-hmm. uh, those things yep. like and it, so it goes against what their mission is and so that that's really why i don't like the guise of religion um, and how they're able to take advantage of the laws with that guy so uh do you want to talk about your podcast real quick before we wrap up oh well, yeah i appreciate it so uh in my daytime uh, i'm a criminal defense attorney uh by way of a public defender and uh, with the coronavirus, our courthouse is shut down for like a year plus now that's still ongoing. And I just really love uh, trial, uh, kind of standing up against the big guy and, and for what's right. Um, and after, you know, so long of shut down, I had to find another outlet. So now I pretty much interview my friends, colleagues, other uh, criminal defense attorneys about their trial victories, because a lot of the times we just advocate the, the prosecution and law and order. Uh, notion of that stuff and then also I talk to lawyers and other advocates about ways we can improve the criminal justice system and implement uh, ways of change you know I have Celeste on her episode will come out soon and you know on that show we talked about how you know America's love to be narcissistic and talk about how they have the best of everything but you know and just speaking to Celeste we know that there are some aspects of the Canadian legal system that you know we could adopt that would make us better and so, um, yeah, it's just been a really fun, cool outlet, um, and it's been an amazing opportunity to meet people from other, you know, parts of the world and, and communities. And so, it's been really awesome. Yeah, it sounds so interesting. It's awesome. I'm gonna listen a couple. Yeah, we're available. I believe I should. We should be available on all pat- podcast platforms: Apple, Spotify. That's pretty much it. I haven't done too much like of the visual stuff yet. Um, you should be. <laughs> Look at you. God. I still have my day job. So. <laughs> yeah, fucking right, uh, a handsome yeah, I guy. Wow, <laughs> wow. You know, if I had half those looks, uh, oh, dude, you already God. do go live. Uh. <laughs> I know. I but imagine I look like him. Wow. <laughs>